We're back now at 846 with our good friend Tom Brokaw for decades, of course. He's been a trusted voice covering some of the world's biggest stories. When the time came for Tom to cover his own battle with cancer, he did what he knows best, writing about his diagnosis of multiple myeloma and what he's learned about it. That book, A Lucky Life Interrupted, is now being released in paperback. Tom, good morning. So Hi good guys. to see you. Hey, and of course, everyone wants to know how you're feeling, how you're doing, and we know you're looking good. Well, thank you. I mean, everyone, so my answer is always, if I look good now, how did I look before I had cancer? <laughs> no, what happened? Did everybody get cancer? It never goes away, for one thing. It is an incurable but highly treatable cancer, and I count on the treatable part of it. But last week, for example, I had a severe bronchitis condition because my resistance goes down and I'm prone to infection. Mm. It's a big danger for cancer victims of all kinds. And I had to really hammer it for a couple of days with antibiotics and an inhalation procedure that I do. And that's one more reminder that this could be part of my life. On the other hand, there's a wonderful article in the uh, current Parade magazine written by my friend Frank Lawley, a crack editor at Time magazine, who also has multiple myeloma. You know, we're hearing a lot about the moonshot, how we're going to go after cancer in a new way, but it's immunotherapy. This is a case of a multiple myeloma patient who was doomed. But they went in and extracted her white blood cells, re-engineered her, put her back in her body, and they went after the cancer cells. And it cleared up. Now, that's one case. There have been several around the country like that. But that's the real hope that is going on. I'm on chemotherapy right now. I take it every day. I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. You know, maybe they'll get a cure before I die. And if they don't, you know, I hope that all of, the, of us who are patients will be able to add to the research that is so necessary. You talk, Tom, a lot in the book about needing a team around you when you yeah. get a diagnosis like this. And boy, did you have a team, not only in your beautiful wife, Meredith, but in your daughter as well. Well, I still have that team around me. My uh, beginning with Meredith, who's got her finger in my face, you're not going to get on that airplane <laughs> and go one more point, you know. I just got back from Belize fishing for a so week. So you're not listening that to was Meredith. That's the kind of thing that she'll have be doing. Anyhow, Jennifer Broca, who's a doctor, an ER physician in San Francisco, her, uh, her medical school nickname was Bombs Away Broca, which tells you a little bit about her <laughs> attitude. And she was invaluable to me because she knew what questions to ask, what research to look for, how to get on the phone with me, didn't interfere. Mayo team, Sloan Kettering team, and the people at Dana Farber all said the same thing. We take her in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And I say to cancer patients, find a friend who's a doctor and don't make them a part of your treatment team make him your consigliere, your ombudsman. They'll know what questions to ask. They'll tell you about what the translation may be about the information that you're getting. It's so okay that, to question authority. That's something you learned along well, the way. Well, you know, there is no set answer. Cancers have variations. I mean, all doctors say it, it is the fiercest enemy that medicine faces because it changes itself to deal with everything that you throw at constantly. So you, you really need somebody who can go in there and say, they're going to try this, but they may want to think about that. There are some other things that are going on. And it's a constant battle. If you have cancer, in a way your whole family gets cancer because they're involved in it. If you don't have cancer, you can be sympathetic, but you really can't understand it until you get to it yourself. I have a runny nose because my, you know, I'm going around doing that. On the other hand, I have this whole new group of friends, mm -hmm. multiple Iowa people, uh, a Navy Admiral, a, a coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we we're in touch with each other. And then other cancer people as well. I lost a terrific young friend last year who uh, we went through this together. He had a much more serious form of cancer than I did. But I was witness to his bravery and his optimism and the connection that we had. We'd been close for many years, the two families. And Michael and I would talk about fatigue and how no one can understand. He didn't make it. Mm. He's the bravest guy I've ever met at that age, and I'll miss him every day. And that's the consequence of cancer. Well, it's quite a story. A lucky life interrupted in paperback. Yeah, it's still a lucky life. That's the important mm. thing. It is indeed. I'm here with the two of you. What more yeah. can I ask? <laughs> we feel like the lucky ones. Thank you, Tom. If oh. you've slowed down, we haven't noticed, Tom. We'll <laughs> yeah. be right back. This is Today on NBC. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.